What's going on guys? This is the Wobblefet, and welcome to Mechanics Monday, a series where I pick a mechanic to analyze each week that may be underexplored or unknown to players in the VGC community. This week, we'll be looking at two moves that rely on the opponent's stats when dealing damage, Foul Play and Gyro Ball. Thanks to the addition of Restricted Legendaries in VGC 19, these moves have both come to see play again, with Gyro Ball hitting the extremely powerful Xerneas and Foul Play hitting a wide range of targets with high attack stats. Although most players have a basic understanding of how each move works, having a more comprehensive understanding can be helpful both in team building and during battle to have a better grasp of what's going on. Let's start off with Foul Play. Foul Play is a 95 base power dark type move that uses the opponent's attack stat instead of the user's attack stat in damage calculation. So, for example, take a look at my Alolan Impersion versus the opposing Dusk Maiden Necrozma in the damage calculator. Let's say I give Persian both Foul Play and Crunch, but I'll manually change Crunch's base power to be 95 instead of its regular 80. As you can see, there's a significant difference in damage here. Foul Play is doing 61% at a minimum, and Crunch is doing a measly 26% at its maximum. The reason for the difference here is because Persian is using Duskmane's 229 attack stat when it is calculating damage. Just to prove this to you, Look what happens if I manually modify Alolan Persian's base attack to be 157, give it 252 attack EVs, and give it an adamant nature. As you can see, now this 95 base power crunch and foul play are dealing equal damage, and that's because Persian is using Dusk Main Necrozma's attack stat for its damage calculation. Just for reference, here's an example of that foul play into Dusk Main in game. Now when I say attack stat, as far as foul play is concerned, the only modifiers to attack that foul play cares about with respect to the target are boosts and drops. What this means is, if Duskmane has an attack boost from Swords Dance or was intimidated, foul play's damage will change along with those boosts. So for example, if my Duskmane Necrozma uses Swords Dance, Persian now threatens a one hit KO with foul play because the plus two impacts foul play's damage. It doesn't matter whether or not Persian has attack boost or drops, just if the target does. Again, for example, if Persian has been intimidated, that won't impact how much damage foul play does to Duskmane Necrozma, as you can see from the damage calculation on your screen. But what about things like Choice Band, or Burns, or Huge Power, or anything else that affects the attack stat? Well, for those modifiers, the user of foul play has to have Choice Band, or be burned, or have huge power for them to matter. Let's see a couple examples of what I mean. If my Necrozma here gets burned with Will-O-Wisp, as Persian goes for Foul Play, Foul Play still does its usual damage to Duskmane, as you can see by the damage calculation. However, if Persian is burned and uses Foul Play, it does a lot less. As you can see, it only hits 65 damage, which would not be possible unless Persian's burn was being accounted for. Suppose Persian uses Foul Play on an Alolan Marowak that isn't holding a Thick Club. Persian does 126 damage with Foul Play here, which lines up with the damage calculation. However, let's consider the same scenario again, but this time Marowak does have a Thick Club item, as you can see on the screen. Foul Play still falls within the same damage range as before this time happening to also do 126 damage, which again shows that Foul Play isn't considering the Thick Club when calculating damage. Because of Foul Play, it's heavily encouraged to run minimum attack IVs on Pokemon that don't care about their physical attack, even if they wouldn't often be targeted by Foul Play. For example, consider Eveltal's Foul Play against an opposing Lunala. Let's say after catching Lunala, you just decided to level it up to level 100 and use a golden bottle cap on it to max out all of its IVs to 31. If you compare 31 attack IVs to just 0 attack IVs on Lunala though, the difference is massive. The damage roll drops from 87% of Lunala's HP down to 76% of Lunala's HP, a difference of about 11%, which is really big. This matters for pretty much every special attacker though. Even though it's not likely my Xerneas is going to be getting hit with a Foul Play, by reducing Xerneas' attack IV, you can reduce the damage from Foul Play if, say, Xerneas gets hit upon switching in. In addition to reducing damage from Foul Play, 
Running zero attack IVs on your special attackers mean they take less damage if they hit themselves in confusion from something like Swagger. The only reason not to run minimum attack IVs on your special attackers is to increase the damage from struggle in a PP stall situation, which is going to be way less common than something like foul play. This logic is so prominent that Pokemon Showdown even auto-implements this mechanic for you in their team builder, so you don't have to bother zeroing out the attack IV every time. As an aside, the move Strength Sap behaves very similarly to Foul Play. Strength Sap is a move that heals the user by however much attack the target has, and the way the attack stat is determined is done exactly the same way that Foul Play does it. So, for example, suppose my Vile Plume here goes for a Strength Sap into an Incineroar with a 149 attack stat. I'll be using Strength Sap on my own Incineroar here for the sake of the example. As you can see, Strength Sap healed Vile Plume by 149, all the way down from 4 HP up to 153. You can see that Incineroar got an attack drop before the healing effect, but Strength Sap still just considers Incineroar at plus zero. Just like Foul Play, Strength Sap will recover more or less HP based on whether the opponent has positive boosts or negative drops. So if Incineroar is at minus one before using Strength Sap on it, then Vile Plume would recover less HP. And in the same way to Foul Play, boosts and drops are the only things affecting Strength Sap. If I gave Incineroar a Choice Band, and Vile Plume is in the same situation as last time, it still only recovers 149 HP from Strength Sap. As you can see, Vile Plume goes from 7 HP this time, up to 156 HP. With that out of the way, let's move on to Gyro Ball. Generally speaking, the slower the user of Gyro Ball is relative to the target, the stronger Gyro Ball becomes. Here's the exact formula for how to calculate Gyro Ball. To start off, you take 25 times the opponent's speed stat, then divide that by the user's speed stat. Because of the floor operation, if there is a decimal at the end of the calculation, it ends up being chopped off or truncating the decimal. Gyro Ball has to have at least one base power at a minimum, and it can only have 150 base power at a maximum. Let's look at an example of how to calculate this. Suppose my Ferrothorn is minimum speed and attacks a Serena with an adamant nature and no speed EVs. Ferrothorn reaches a 22 speed stat at the lowest, and this Serena has a 92 speed stat. 25 times 92 divided by 22 equals 104.54 repeating, which gets floored to 104. You can also see this in the damage calculator where Ferrothorn's Gyro Ball is indeed 104 base power against Serena. Unlike Foul Play, Ferrothorn's Gyro Ball factors in all speed changes for both opponents when doing its damage calculation. This means things like Tailwind, Paralysis, Speeds Boost or Drops, Choice Scarf, abilities like Swift Swim, and so on are all factored into Gyro Ball's base power calculation. For example, consider this opposing Bronzong's Gyro Ball into my Tapu Lele. My Tapu Lele has a 115 speed stat, and Bronzong has a 34 speed stat. Plugging that into our Gyro Ball formula, we can see that Gyro Ball will only have 84 base power, which is pretty low. This Bronzong also has no attack investment, so it doesn't even come close to 1 hit KOing Tapu Lele. However, what happens if I use Tailwind with my Ho-Oh beside Tapu Lele? Now, Tapu Lele's speed doubles from 115 to 230, which is more than enough for Gyro Ball to have 150 base power and take a clean knockout. As you can see, you don't even have to wait a turn for the speed to update. Tapu Lele gets the speed immediately as soon as Tailwind is used. This would also apply if Tapu Lele's speed was changed in some other way during the middle of a turn, like an Icy Wind speed drop, for example. Of course, this can work against the Gyro Ball user if you use Tailwind on the side of Bronzong. As you can see, now Gyro Ball only does a pitiful 66 damage to Tapu Lele, and that's because Tailwind increased Bronzong's speed, which made Gyro Ball weaker. Just to reiterate, Gyro Ball considers every speed modifier, not just Tailwind, when it calculates speed. So stuff like Geomancy boosts, drops from Icy Wind, Pledge Swamp, Iron Ball, and literally anything else related to speed is applied. So if you're wanting to do manual Gyro Ball calculations, make sure you keep all these factors in mind. Because Gyro Ball has a fixed formula for determining damage, we can reverse engineer what the minimum speed stats are for Gyro Ball hitting 150 base power for a Pokemon like Stakataka, Bronzong, and Ferrothorn. 
you can see these all here on the screen. As you can see, even though all these Pokemon are pretty slow, the numbers at which Gyro Ball reaches its maximum base power really jumps all over the place. This means, for example, it's impossible for Bronzong to have a 150 base power Gyro Ball against Xerneas before he uses Geomancy. It also means that generally speaking, if you have a slow Pokemon that doesn't care much about speed, running less speed to reduce Gyro Ball damage might be a good thing to do. For example, Amoongus doesn't really have to run minimum speed. In fact, it may be preferable not to run minimum speed in order to spore things like minimum speed Bronzong or Araquanid before they have a chance to move outside of Trick Room. Let's take a look at the difference in damage between minimum speed Stakataka and Amoongus. As you can see here, if Amoongus has a neutral nature and 31 speed IVs, Stakataka's Gyro Ball base power is 78. However, if you give Amoongus Zero speed IVs and a speed lowering nature like Sassy, that base power drops down all the way to 48, a 30 base power difference. Again, it might not always be optimal to run minimum speed Amoongus in the context of sporing other slow Pokemon first, but it definitely can help reduce the power of Gyro Ball. And Amoongus is not the only Pokemon that can do this, so it might be helpful to keep this in mind. That's all for today's Mechanics Monday. Now that you have a better understanding of how foul play and gyro ball work, you can apply it to your games with more confidence. Did you learn anything new today about either of these attacks? What are some other mechanics you'd like to see me cover? Let me know down in the comments below. Until next time, have a good one.